Okay, welcome back. I am here to react on this uh, video of Magnus Oraka. Some of you know him because um, I don't want to go back to the old stories about how he was, what he said about Biafra and what he believed on. He happened to be part of the people who claim that uh, Biafra is the only way they have seen the road, they have seen the light and blah, blah, blah. From South South. But when the things did not go the way they want, or maybe when they, when they did not get what they expect to have, they begin to fumble. Turn against something or people they have they, they were supported, just like uh, in Sima. So this Magnus Oraka here is one of the kind of people, one of the people that claim that uh, the that Ibo man is, uh, is this, Ibo man is that, trying to say something as a bad woman and believe that Biafra is the only way to go, all of a sudden, he changed and started talking to people. The video that I posted yesterday about the fake pastor that attacked PM, that was a program. Magnus Oraka was there with that man and they were insulting Igbo people. In this video, you see, when you listen to him here, you feel like he sounds like he loves Igbo people or he cares about Igbo people, but today he's for Igbo. Tomorrow he's against Igbo. Always changing. A lot of Nigerians are like that. I don't I don't know why. I don't know why some people choose to live that kind of life. You are not in one place and you are confusing people. Nobody knows what you can do, just like a chame chameleon. You know, you are white today, next minute you are black, next minute you are red. So I don't want to waste much of your time. Hear what he said, and I'll be right back. If you are that person that is expecting Tinubu to fix this country, trust me, you are wasting your time. There are many reasons why Tinubu cannot fix this country. In fact, Tinubu will not fix it. Not that I don't want him to fix it. Certainly not. I don't mind if, even if the devil comes and fix Nigeria, provided everybody benefits at the end of the day but Tinubu cannot fix this country not because he doesn't know how oh. it's just because he's not the right spanner to lose the right bolt it's not the right he is not the right tool for the challenging problem that is just what it is now somebody comes and said he is going to increase tax he has been increasing virtually almost everything by floating there when 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 for for some of you who don't know what it means to float the naira it simply means to reduce the value of the naira by making so much of it available you know i said something now be, because of the because of the intelligence quotients of Nigerians, sometimes speaking to them is very difficult. Even as I speak, I find it difficult that my listeners will understand what I'm saying. But let me attempt to break it down in, 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 its, in, its, mo in its most simplistic form. Perhaps mm. I could just send the message through. A Mefele printed new Naira notes, which was which was printed to replace the old naira notes and towards the end of um what month was that towards towards election period they've succeeded in you know um they've succeeded in taking off all the old naira notes but something also happened that was you remember there was a trailer that was stopped with with uh with uh, naira load of money the, the old naira notes people bringing ghana ghana must go load of naira note millions of naira it shows that a lot of people have millions of naira in their houses and we're bringing it and towards the election it was believed that the old Naira notes were replaced with the new one. Now, Tinubu came and said the old Naira note 
should come into circulation and circulate side by side with the new Naira note, which means the volume of Naira note that was available before, which was enough to run the mainstream economy of buying and selling, is there plus the new Naira note. You see, so that means we have two volumes of currency in circulation. So you can see that, of course, the money will be valueless because as much as say the price of things are high, it's because the quantity of money in circulation is much. We have the quantity of money. You see, quantity of money is different from the value of money. If that you have quantity of money does not mean it must have the same value of money. Now, Tinubu has increased tax. Now, we have money in circulation. Tinubu increased tax. It increased, increased electricity, increased petrol, increased VAT, increased this, increased that. Banks are stealing from you. In fact, we are so vulnerable to all types of deductions that if you if you go out with 10,000, it's, as, it's as if you didn't carry anything. But here was the point the guy said, the video I just watched. That made me want to do this video. Here's the point. The man said, Tinubu is increasing tax to make life difficult. Asking you to, to endure these baby steps of pain. Then use the same tax to buy palliative for you to cushion the hardship that the said tax resulted to while your host have you been to the hospital recently i don't pray you go to the hospital have you been to the hospital recently you don't go to the hospital lately have you been to the hospital yeah don't go to the hospital even if it means it's just a small headache there's a clinic very close to me before i went before i traveled on i i had this uh dysentery and before i knew it I was spending close to 20,000 naira for just the treatment of dysentery. Injections, drip, medications, and uh, consultation. 20,000 naira. School have just resumed. They've sent a circular to us that, owing to the realities of the new pricing, that school fees will be increased. Now we are shouting a well. We didn't discuss this in the last PTA. So, but we don't know. But whether we like it or not, it's very obvious that prices have to increase. So you increase tax. The essence of tax is to make money available for government to run its administration. But while they increase your tax, what are they using the money for? the alleged subsidy removal that was reduced if at all it was of course there was no subsidy that was re removed what are they using the money for for you to have an idea of what the enormity of spendthriftness of wastefulness that is going on an average senator has a house in abuja has his own personal house probably has another house in london and in each house he has his cook his driver his cleaners his whatever water and they are there the problem you see with nigeria is not rocket science there's no problem when i say there's no problem i don't mean there's no problem it's not as if there's no sign that you don't need any science to solve it all you just need is just fight corruption and there is no science there's no is the rock there is not a rocket science to fight the type of correction corruption that we have to solve the problem of nigeria is not rocket science all you need to do is simply fight corruption and for you to fight corruption you must be yourself not a corrupt person and that is where we nigerians come in you are electing corrupt people to go into office that will not have the power to tackle corruption because if i'm a thief and i want to fight a thief the thief is going to fight back at me why do you think they are unable to arrest yaya bello 
Why do you think they could not fight uh, arrest Yaya Bello? Because he has told them, invite me to a court, come to a court. We are this same court, this same uh, people that I gave two hundred million naira. Of course, you can't arrest him. The person that you are sent to go arrest him is a, is a corrupt person. The person ordering the arrest is corrupt. The person who is going to give the final this uh, order to arrest the person is corrupt. So what are you saying? You think if Yaya Bello decides to open up to what he did for Tinubu, you think it will not be you? Of course, it's not going to be a come, come as a surprise. Whatever Wicked does in Abuja, Tinubu cannot do anything to Wicked because they all know what they did. Now, somebody who tells you that election and elections are not served a la carte, you have to grab it, you have to snatch it, and you have to run away with it. In other words, he's saying that election must be stolen. That is what it means. You must steal election in order to win it. Now, imagine the mindset of an individual like that spewing that kind of perspective and you elect him to the office to go and run a, run an economy for you so at the end of the day there's a huge problem ahead and i think the lifespan of nigeria will last till uh, 2027 trust me i see some young when i read some comments on my thread I sometimes I randomly just pick some as okay, let me go and see the age of this person that is making this comment and I realize there are young people 30s between 30 and 40 these are the people who are supposed to see the very impact of their the country that has been bestowed on them these are the people that were told 20 years ago that they are the leaders of tomorrow now is their turn to be leaders they are still fanning the ambers of those who promised them to be leaders they are still hailing them hey baba erire oshe baba alai jaza maninka anosabi speakable they are hey chief the people that told you 20 years ago that you are going to be the leader of today today has come you are still hailing them to lead you that in itself shows the height of stupidity and how these politicians have understood that your IQ is very low. See, no matter how dictatorial a president is, no matter how strong an army is, no matter how corrupt the system is, it cannot be stronger than the people than the resolve please underline the word resolve it cannot be stronger than the resolve of the people <coughs> now what the politician understand is because they understand that nigerians are incapable of resolving of coming to a resolution they are incapable of that so because what is happening in Nigeria didn't have to happen in Kenya before they started the revolution. People are being kidnapped. Phones are being used to call the loved ones of those kidnapped. And for you to get a phone number, you have to submit your NIN. Your NIN has a detailed facial feature. Of you has your fingerprints have your address have your nest of kings number as if every detail about you is attached to a phone number and you tell me the, that the uh, Nigerian communication uh, NC and Nigerian uh, uh, com whatever they are cannot and to tell you the hypocrisy of this thing is that if you go to a police station and report your phone stolen, they will say bring money for tracking. And truly, truly, within one week or two, they've tracked the phone and they will recover the phone. 
they will recover a stolen phone that is probably bought at 60,000 or 80,000 but cannot track a phone of a kidnapper now you see where we are if you are hoping on true because he's a Yoruba man I can understand that you are a victim of tribalism and sometimes as petty as it is it could be trust me I've met some very some very disheartening and some very disheartening reprobate, reprobates that call themselves uh, Tinubu supporters and they are mostly Yorubas I thought the biggest problem we had was the religious fanaticism of the north but having seen the bigotic uh, uh, tribal bigot uh, what is the, the English when I, when I saw the bigotry of tribalism of the Yorubans I can't the fan I can't the, 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 the religious because to be to very candid eh, it's easier to discuss with a Hausa Muslim man about the reality of politics than to discuss with a Muslim Yoruba fanatic. It's very, very difficult. Because it's amazing that I know that Yorubas can bring a good leader. I know I know if I, if, if Anosip Anjo had come out and represented APC, trust me, Peter Obi would not even make name. Peter Obi would not even get the, the name he has. Peter Obi's popularity came as a result of the system's inability to bring a better candidate. So Peter Obi was rated better or best among the ones that were available. That was what culminated into the popularity of Peter Obi. If APC had brought out Osibanjo, trust me, Peter B would not have gone anywhere. So when I see a, I was in Ilori, what I saw in Ilori would have ended up, would have, would have made me hate all Yorubas. What I saw in Ilori, oh my goodness. There was no space at all no rationalization so, okay let me even see the let me even weigh the rods and cons and you know use my brain to fish out the reality and the truth nothing all they saw was that peter b was a christian peter b was in Igbo, and therefore will not vote for him it doesn't matter whether it was proven to them that this is the man that will fix this country they don't care They are using, they, you're already used to hard life, not having good water, not having good sanitary condition. Anyhow, hey, Marekbe, Oshere, Omale, Etuale, Malekbe, Maforia, Nisi, Abiangere, Nia, you just, you have no foresight. You don't even believe that there's another life that is called comfort. Every day you spend waking up is about surviving. And you think living is about surviving. I mean, living a life. Life is not about surviving. Life is not about going to drink beer and chopping plate of fish and attending parties. Driving the best of cars. That is not life. Life is the amount of impact that you make on people. If I die today, what will people say in my funeral? They'll say, oh, Mr. Magnus is intelligent. He has impacted my, in my life by the, by the messages he has sent to me. Now that's life. So don't come and say, I hate, hate you. Come, let me ask you, is Yoruba an inferior? Are Yoruba people inferior? Because you seem to want to protect this Yoruba. The only way you can do it is by attack. Why not attack Fulani? I've never seen a Yoruba man, a man fighting themselves. It's only Igbo, Igbo, Sadran, Edo, Igbo, Sadran, Edo. You look how small they. If it were, if, if, imagine the Yorubas are on the same page with the rest of the South. You think the Fulanis will have the type of power they have turning this country upside down? But the, the an average Yoruba man thinks about himself alone. 
particularly this group of Tinubu supporters, they don't see this country, they just see only themselves, they just see our local. Since the Fulanese have been ruling this country, Fulanese has never used that statement. It's Fulanese turn, or it's Hausa turn, or it's Igbo turn. It's only this Tinubu government that we saw Yoruba local. So please, don't, I've told you that if it were not for some people, if it were the experience I had in Ilori, I would have hated the Yorubas with all my heart. If. So if you didn't, if you decide to take the word if alone and make your conclusion because you want to hate me, fine. It's okay with me. I, I'm not scared of you. You can work with whatever impression you have about me. I don't care. That's because a lot of us have very low IQs. And I cannot work with people that have low IQ. How would you have a choice of Tinubu, Peter Obi, and Atiku? And Tinubu at the end of the day is your president. And some even with after one year of testing what this man can dish out, some people are still supporting. Like this guy, what's his name? Uh, Sheilo. I saw Sheilo and, and I'm like shaking my head. Sheilo, have you been to the market lately? Have you been to the market lately? A bag of Semovita, we bought it when um, day before yesterday, fifteen thousand two hundred. Fifteen thousand two hundred naira. That is what they pay some workers in the shop. I, I still find it difficult that some people could cling on to their tribal proclivity or their plan tribal bias in the face of this harsh reality that a man who never had a plan of fixing nigeria the only plan he had was just to come and be president i want to be president what is your plan what plan do you have for nigeria i say first day hit the ground running second day keep running third day don't stop running and he thought 200 million, the lives of 200 million Nigerians is a joke. Nigeria is a joke. And he was talking about running the first day, don't stop running and keep running. He never for one day told you what, you, what he was going to do. Increase tax net. Reduce the purchasing power. How does a man tell you that he's going to, he says he's going to reduce your purchasing power? Is your purchasing power not reduced today? You have so much money in circulation. I was in the bank one time. I, I just see money everywhere. There's, look, there's so much money, quantity of money in circulation, but with very low value. Well, the truth is about the truth about this thing is that you like support Tinubu, don't support Tinubu. It doesn't change anything. The truth is that. The same Igbo man that you want to teach a lesson, the same Igbo man that you have sworn that they will never be present or you must reduce their political relevance in Nigeria. Trust me, go to the beer palace. Now them day there they knock, they cancel bottles. Go to the boutique. Now them day there they buy clothes. Go to the market. They are the ones shopping. Go to the supermarket. They are the ones shopping. Look at the roads. 50% the... the before for every 10 cars that will pass two must belong to an Igbo man go to the filling station any filling station they are the ones buying the fuel so any attempt because you want to teach the Igbo man a lesson you're not you're, you're now you you're, you're just look at it you're the one suffering at the end of the day because these people already have a system of making money for themselves that is not tied to government even the ones working for government have a business on their own that yields money so you say you want to suffer the Igbos, you are not suffering them i'm not an Igbo man so keep supporting to because you want you you don't want Igbo man there are some yorubas i can tell you that instead of an Igbo man to be present eh, let Fulani rule for 100 years. There are some Yorubas like that. But I, I, because I was also lost in this, I, I Magnus Oraka, at one point in time, I was also lost in this hate Igbo at all costs. There was a time I, I, I also didn't just like Igbos. I just, when I just see them, I just dislike them. I just 
don't like them. But I can't ask, what exactly? I now realize that when I was growing up in a, in Kaduna SS5 GBR Road, going to school, I will see oh yamri yamuti akari. So all these narratives, nomenclatures that suggest Igbos are inferior, and in order to feel big, I also. But I kept deceiving myself because as much as I thought the Igbos were inferior, they were including me too. Me, the Robo man, the Ijo man, the Calabar man, the Edo man. All of us, we are all termed as Yamiri. So who was I fooling? I thought I was with the houses looking at the Igbos as inferior. Whereas me too, I was, in, I was also termed as inferior as them. But the thing that really got me is, okay, if they can gang up for an Igbo man not to be president... Is it me, the Yoruba man, that will become president tomorrow? Nigeria is too big to allow only Lagos to be the point of entry of all our containers. Nigeria is too big. Nigeria is too big. But they are afraid if they open seaport in Wari, open seaport in Calabar, 90% of the business in Lagos will die off, which will culminate, which will transcend into the business of the southwest and the idea they tell that a uh, ship cannot come to calabar port ship cannot come to worry port who told you so but when when the when the colonialists came it was in calabar they dropped their ship to carry slaves so why why is it possible to carry slaves but can't bring uh, goods there it's it's funny it's funny we must correct these narratives one day or the other we must tell ourselves the truth one day or the other we must tell ourselves the truth at least we are getting there there was a time that it was like Igbos were the one fighting this fight now at least they are getting sympathy they're getting sympathy from 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 the likes of we the south south the south south people so whether you like it or not the day the south east and south south come together and say look this is what we want ah uh, this thing you remember this uh niger data avengers when i don't forget niger data avengers when they started blowing up you know something happened during that time that got that got me <laughs> that got me interested when the niger delta avengers were blowing up pipe we when are we pipe we they happy we they support them we they clap for them the people will not be the pipe they will not get the pipe now then come the vex can you imagine it's just like my house now this is my television now outsiders come they break the television my my children they broke this television the other children they happy but your own picking outside the other children for the company come they vex say why we break our own tv it shows that the people they enjoy the tv not my children so it shows that for for my own children to be happy that they are breaking their father's television and uh, another people with children they vex say why would they break our part tv me saying that them they enjoy the tv not be my own children which is exactly what is happening to our oil. We are it we are the custodian of the oil, but we are not the one is that is enjoying it. And to make the, the to make matters even more ridiculous is that they will throw small of that money to you, will be happy. You they eat this money, they forget say you go die. You go buy, you go on, you go, you go, you go finish, you go work out. But you still want to pack, 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 pack. Because the masses are not willing to revolt. The masses are not willing to revolt. But you see this revolution that they are thinking will not come. It will See, there's a limit to which the masses will endure this hunger. A, it, will definitely, it will definitely end. All this madness, all this madness that this this one you do, do you know what it takes to be a tinubu supporter you have to be absolutely insane to support tinubu see them on a rice tv before question i don't shout hey look you dumb boy let me talk you cannot intimidate me look young boy keep quiet let me talk so the truth is that the, the country is so bad so when I see young men of 30, 35, 40 fighting themselves on my thread on the base of Yoruba man, fight, 
to be very frank Igbos are not tribalistic when it comes to elections I'm not saying this because I want favors from the Igbos because Igbos they voted for Yaradua Igbos they voted for Atiku Igbos they voted for Obasanjo I can assure you that if Labour Party had brought in Oji Uzokalu, the Igbos would not vote for him I can assure you that I can assure you that if if Igbos had brought in Rocha Sokorocha Rocha Sokorocha would not have won any state in the southeast but I can tell you that a lot of Igbos voted for Peter B because they believed if Peter B came into power he will make the economy suitable for all Igbos to do their business and thrive that's why not because Peter B is an Igbo man unlike those who voted for Tinubu because he's a Yoruba man so this group of Yorubas that have this deep rooted hate look I never knew how the, I, 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 when, when I when I was moving with all those IPOB members when they were telling me about how uh, they hate them I, I, I never felt it until recently my brother Put it in any sentence you want. The truth is that the hatred for Igbo is very deep. Very, very deep. From some Yorubas. Uh, this guy with me name Onanuga. I don't talk I'm again. No. Some Yorubas. Uh -huh. That revolution. <coughs> me, I'm too old. You see, I'm, see my hair. See, I'm, I'm too old. I know if you go carry stick stand. I can't even stand for one hour or two hours. So, I've lived, at least I've crossed the threshold of like life expect life expectancy i've crossed the threshold it's you what what are you doing are you comfortable with this constant debate that that takes you neither here nor there this fighting that hey omale idiot you uh, obedient uh, our local like this at the end of the day the prices of foods in the market have no have no tribe the prices of good in the market have no religion. The reality of the hardship in Nigeria have no religion, have no tribe. Everybody is feeling it the same way the other is feeling it. So why do you still engage on this tribal thing? Low IQ. Your IQ is very, very low. There is a man who I saw him fight that he, he that he even had to flog some people on, for, on, on account of Tinubu, that he persecuted some people in the sake of forcing them to vote for Tinubu, but he's hungry. He's hungry, he's hungry. He can't eat. Rather than coming together and seeing the truth that, well, I may have voted for Tinubu in the past because I loved him, but the reality is that the man, the man has no future. Go to Abuja. 2027 is still far away, but the posters of Tinubu are in Abuja with his wife. The posters of Tinubu are in Abuja. It's just so it's so it's so funny. And I'm seeing this man, what's his name? Uh, Kwankwaso, saying he wants to become president. President of who? President of who? The only time we have had a seemingness of an economy was when a southern man ruled, Obasanjo and Jonathan. So, the, 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 the northern politicians don't come in as nationalists. The only nationalists from the north who came in Yaradua didn't, unfortunately didn't rule for so long before he passed on. So, most of these politicians or these presidential candidates, they come in as tribal champion. Even Omoye Le show read that a lot of you are angling for. I've listened to him. He too is a is a tribal champion. Because Omoye show Omoye Le show cannot win an election, cannot win a presidential election in Nigeria. Let's face it. Let's face it. But I'm not saying he doesn't have his own share of nuisance value. What I would have expected Shore to do is put your own resources to somebody else's resource and plan a deal. 
if this thing happens, what's going to be in it for me? That's how the Northerners play their own. They have a way of playing a deal. Okay, do this, I will get this. So all this one that I see, the worst Southerner, the worst Southerner, as far as I'm concerned, the worst Southerner, in my own estimation, okay, the two most worst Southerner, in my own estimation, is, and they are my age mate, Reno Omokri and Asari Dokubo. They are the two worst Southerners. Reno Omokri, it's like the only thing that gives you life is your characteristic hatred for, for Peter Obi, all because he's an Igbo man. Same thing as Asari Dokubo. And to think that this Asari Dokubo once called me that I should join him in his uh, BMC, uh, BNC, uh, Biafra National Congress. But I knew, I said, okay, I like somebody with 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 a cloud, somebody with poise, somebody with finesse, somebody, not all this, you go to social media, you carry AK-47 and all this, you tell, they talk like, the, I, I'm so tell some of your talks are being used for comedy skits and all those, I just, I don't, I, I don't, I may not have money, but I, I, I want to be associated, associated with class, with finesse. With, with with a system that works with a structure that has rules with a structure that has formula which provides the necessarily go the necessary goals so i don't i don't i don't i i don't operate that way but the most painful thing is that you see the victims fighting themselves over the crumbs have you seen dogs puppies feeding the food is enough for everybody to eat, but they are fighting themselves to eat it. At the end of the day, it is them that will throw majority of the food away on the ground. That's what they are doing to us. What is our own? We have it in abundance. They throw crumbs to us and we are fighting over it. Come to the north, there you see somebody, he no go to school, he no get any handwork, but he get mansion. I was in Meduguri the other day. One Al Haji Sabon Kudi. Sabon Kudi, yes. He doesn't even have to sign a stamp. They bring document and stamp. He go bring go take press and I'm being signature. But his 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 house he has an estate for his wives. They are in his own is in Palo alone be like one reception of one in Palo alone be like reception of Transco Hilton. Okay, I believe you have listened to him. And uh, he said a lot of things. Most of the things he said is is okay. I mean, it is true. But uh, I don't want to talk much more about what he said about the Yoruba people because we all know this is happening. What we are saying, it is them that are working with Igbo Yoruba people and attacking Igbos and not learning the lesson. Okay, it's not as if they don't understand it, but they do. It's just that they want to use Igbo people to catch crews. There's something important he said here, which I want to highlight. And that thing is the evil man not relying on government. Some people see it as a brag, that you are bragging about your people, you are bragging about evil man and all that. No, but that is the reality. It is the reality because we all know we can see, we can feel it. Hardship is everywhere. Everybody can face it. It's not meant for one person, but when Igbo man, when he has to do with Igbo man and other tribes, Igbo man seems to be different, different species. And that is what some people don't like. They don't even want to hear about it at all. Now, he said that when he was in this school, I think in primary school or secondary school, back then in the north, that uh, he used to hate Igbo people. And later he realized that hating Igbo people is, is like a mistake because... The same in, in Yemen they are calling the white people is what they are also calling him. It is this, this still the same today. Some people think it's an easy ignorant. No. That you are claiming you are equal, you are this, you are that. Not claiming you are. Okay, I'm, I'm not dragging your, your name with you. But we have to be honest. When, when the Igbo, 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 Igbo is mentioned, it, there's nobody who more evil than other all right nobody 
So if you don't want to answer your name because your name is from you from Ukraine or from uh, you are from Anyoma and all that, he said Luku, uh, Kwale, uh, Kwale, many other places in the in the so-called South South region that are Igbo, but they don't want to answer Igbo because they think that those who are living in South East are the real Igbo. No, we still have different names among us in South East in the so-called five states, which is South South East now. Magru Zoraga sounds like he, he, he claimed that he understands what he's playing at now. No, few few weeks ago, he was busy attacking the people with that fake person that I told you about. So, this is just a lesson for many people. If you think that the people are not, I mean, you don't like them, think, think about your future because you cannot have your own country alone. Right? You can't. And if you think that the people want to dominate you, come on. Like Magnus or Magnus, Magnus or like uh, Oraka here. Magnus said that he don't even know, he don't, can't speak Igbo language. But you hear him speaking Yoruba and Hausa. But from where he comes from, which is Urobo, Urobo is more closer to Igbo people than Yoruba or to Hausa. Why is he not speaking? Why why is it that he don't he can't speak any word in Igbo language but he can speak Yoruba and not I don't know if he speaks Yoruba fluently but at least he can speak some words in Yoruba, in Yoruba language than Igbo language. The same thing I'm talking about on Aosa. He speaks Aosa fluently I think maybe because he grew up there and he studied there. So tell me what you think about all he said okay because I cannot um, I don't want to start doing a long video about this. Let's just uh, share. Let me just hear from your own opinion. What do you think about what he said? Do you agree or disagree? Put it on comment section and see you again. If you are new, like the video and share it. God bless you and see you again. Bye bye for now.